The first step of the process is to drill holes to place the explosives inside the rock we want to break. Inside each hole a primer is used to initiate the explosives. Several types of explosive products can be used to charge the holes. Essentially, the holes are filled with either packaged or bulk explosives. Primers are made of packaged emulsions or a product called boosters combined with a detonator placed in them. The explosion exerts very high pressures way above the rock strength. This creates a zone of crushed rock immediately around the hole. The explosion also generates a shock wave which starts the cracking process. The explosive gases generated expand extremely quickly, forcing cracks apart, breaking the rock and pushing it into the nearest void. Long holes may use multiple primers. They are typically placed at the toe of the blast hole and then at predefined intervals as determined by the drill and blast engineer. Enough primers are used to ensure that the long explosive column is initiated. Even though explosives are hazardous, if stored, handled, transported and used correctly, they are safe. Explosives must always be stored in authorised areas. The different classes of explosives should be separated by physical barriers. For example, the detonator must not be stored with the boosters, packaged or bulk explosives. It is a good practice to display the storage rules inside the magazines and only authorised personnel will have access to the explosives. Similar rules apply to the movement of explosives. They can only be transported in approved vehicles driven by competent and authorised persons. Blasting is part of everyday life in a mine and each site has specific procedures for firing. You should be aware of these procedures. A safety requirement to all sites is that everyone needs to stay clear of the area affected by the firing. There will be barricades and signage to inform you. Employees must be in a designated safe area during the firing. Well, the tag board is for safety. It lets us know who's actually in the working parts of the mine. So if there's anybody left in the mine, we don't fire. Three, two, one. In most cases, access to the firing site is restricted until a competent authorised person has cleared the area as safe. There are three main hazards to be aware of after a firing. The fumes, the possibility of misfires and changes to ground conditions that could make the area unstable. 